Hello again fellow Beach Bum Traders. We hope that you had a great trading week last week. We hope that you found our weekly game plan from last week helpful to you in your trading. Please let us know if you found our weekly game plan from last week helpful to you in the comments below. And please let us know how your trading went this week. Uh, good or bad, what did you learn? Uh, how can we improve our weekly game plans to help you succeed in your trading? Now let's get started preparing our game plan for next week. Welcome to October, fellow Beach Bomb Traders. We know that September was kind of a bumpy month and now we're looking forward to October. And we're going to talk about why you shouldn't fear October. If you are new to our Beach Bum Trading community, we would highly recommend that you go back and uh, listen to and watch our videos from September in the Game Plans playlist. Hopefully you will learn and hopefully our existing Beach Bum Traders found ways to make money even though uh, September is typically a declining month. Uh, we talked about strategies that you can make money whether the market's going up or down or chopping sideways. So we hope that all helps. Now we're going to talk about October and how can we make money during the month of October and why you shouldn't fear October. So I have several articles I'm going to uh, look at uh, briefly and I'll put the references in the description box below that talk about October and why we don't need to fear October. The first one, it talks about uh, the per perception that October is the, the month of market crashes. And if you read this article and look at the key takeaways, it's, it's a psychological anticipation because of history. Some of the, the major historical market crashes happen to occur in October. But as we'll see in the further articles, this may be caused by the declines in September and October being blamed for those declines. Um, not to say it can't happen, but again, we'll see that typically October is, is not a bad month. Um, and here it says, historically speaking, September has more uh, down markets than October. And we'll see part of this is attributed to what they call the October effect. Back in September, we talked about the September effect and that markets typically historically decline in September. Now let's look at, okay, in the month of October, what's the October effect? Well, it's a perceived anomaly that stocks tend to decline during October. And again, we can see this is a psychological expectation rather than an actual phenomenon as the statistics don't support that uh, psychological anticipation. And again, the key ta takeaways from this article, and again, I'll, I'll reference this below, is that it's a perception, okay? So you're gonna hear a lot of fear uh, about October, but I'm hoping that you will perceive this as an opportunity, that there's a perception of fear that's not reality. So that opens up some great opportunities for us. Uh, if the markets decline because of that fear, maybe a great opportunity to buy because, again, the markets tend not to be down during October, um, which, again, is a, is a great opportunity. So just in terms of the, the months and the uh, historical performance of the months, this is the third article and it generally goes over all the months and I'll reference this again. I believe we looked at this in September. We saw August, September. September tended to be historically the worst month. But now if we look at October, we can see October is, is a nice rebound and it starts the trend up into the fall uh, through the end of the year. So again, we're, we're looking at a nice rebound. October's typically up. So again, nothing to fear. It looks like a, a good opportunity to position ourselves for this uh, upturn 
you know, at the end of the year, we'll talk about the Santa rally, and that's a historical thing at the end of the year. Um, again, we'll, we'll we'll talk about the trend, but again, uh, we got through September. Hopefully, you were able to uh, make money or at least preserve your capital, and now you have some dry powder ready to deploy as the opportunity uh, presents itself in hopefully October. Um, if you watch Jim Cramer, he's been talking about, you know, this, the late September swoon, the September effect, and we've talked about that again all in the past, uh, all, all this month in our game plan, so we've positioned appropriately. Uh, he says the market should bottom based on a technical uh, analyst that he works with um, by possibly as late as October 22nd. So if we happen to see a, a market decline, through the middle to late October, uh, we should see a bottom and a turn back up. And again, a back up, turn back up into the end of the year, which would be great. Great opportunity. Um, another major event that uh, is probably going to weigh on the markets right now is the uh, discussions in the legislature and the Congress that they have to raise the debt ceiling by October 18th, or uh, they risk a uh, government default. Uh, they did pass a funding bill. I don't remember the exact date, but I believe they funded the government through early December. So we shouldn't have a shutdown due to that, but it, they have to raise the debt ceiling, or uh, there is a, I believe there is still a risk of a government shutdown. So we'll see some of the effects of, of these discussions uh, in the uh, futures and in the indices, uh, but I, I believe that um, that may be a, a cause for some fear in the markets until that gets resolved. So we'll talk about that more in a minute. Okay, now let's see how the markets ended up on Friday, and then we'll take a top-down approach and see what the futures and uh, the indicators are pointing us for our game plan for next week. So we can see I'm on the homepage of finviz.com. Again, as always, you can find our affiliate link to finviz in the description box below. This is how the market closed on Friday, October 1st. We can see it rebounded. Initially, it was kind of down and then rebounded towards the end of the day, uh, mostly green on the heat map. Um, I believe the rebound was attributed to the um, announcement that uh, one of the drug companies is coming out with a p pill uh, that is a treatment to, for the pandemic. Uh, to keep people out of the hospital and therefore we as we'll see in a minute um, a lot of the reopening plays were uh, up um, there was a little bit of a euphoric rally based on that news uh, that uh, there may be a treatment for uh, the pandemic uh, and that was perceived positively I believe um, just really briefly uh, if we look at the, some of the news uh, we're going to talk a lot about oil this week um, and energies, and then here's the discussion of the pill for the pandemic treatment. Um, if we briefly look at some of the futures graphs, we uh, we can see oil was up, natural gas was surprisingly down. Uh, we'll talk about this again a little bit in uh, a minute, but that was a bit of a surprise because all the commentators are predicting that nat gas will go up to six seven dollars um, they're talking about oil anywhere from eighty to a hundred dollars and again we're going to talk a lot about that uh, this week because there's some major events occurring um, so I, i'm not sure what the the dip they're talking about shortages in europe uh, all kinds of issues with nat gas in europe so uh, we'll talk, uh, we scalped coal for a very nice profit, we'll talk about that, and we're going to be looking to do that again uh, as, as soon as there, that opportunity presents itself. Uh, we see gold, and we'll see gold and silver are rebounding, and we'll talk about that. We can see the treasury, the treasury had jumped up to 1.5 something, um, and then came back down, retreated below 1.5, and again, we'll 
people are attributing part of the rally to the decline in the treasuries, particularly in the tech stocks. So now let's briefly look at the futures uh, and see what that indicates for us. Before I jump to the futures, let's uh, look at each of the indices in more detail, see where we are in their trends. We can see the SPY uh, has broken down. It's below a uh, support resistance level, kind of tested that on Friday, bounced, down, uh, bounced up against that resistance, and potentially could, it, we'll see if it breaks out, but it's very likely it'll bounce off that resistance and potentially downtrend to test that bottom uh, support level. So we can see how the channel we talked about the other day, that was a very uh, dis decision point because it was sitting uh, below its, um, or right at its 50-day uh, MA, broke down. So I, I would not be surprised if it didn't test the support level. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. And again, that, that would be a decline in SPY, so, so be prepared for that. Uh, the NASDAQ, the Qs, again, very similar. We talked about it was sitting at a decision point at it. It's 50 SMA. It broke down. Now it's sitting a little above the bottom trend line. Uh, it tested it briefly, but again, there's the potential that it may... Uh, to test that support level again. So again, don't be don't be surprised if it doesn't test that support level and, and bounce off of it and hopefully head back up. Now it tested pretty, you know, broke down below its support and then rebounded, tested. Uh, it hit its bottom trend line, so the Dow may be on an uptrend, although it is still below its 50 SMA. So it may test 50 SMA and take may take some effort to break back through that and head back up to its upper trend line. The Russell, the IWM, is still uh, oscillating around its 50 SMA in the middle of its channel. So, again, we we wouldn't expect a whole lot of change, a lot of chop, uh, oscillating around the 50 SMA until it picks a direction, which could be up or down. It's indecisive, could be up or down at this point. If we look at the VIX, we saw some major volatility a couple days ago. It jumped up, looked like it might make a run up to the 28 level. Uh, but then it topped out and then declined on Friday and it still looks like it's primarily declining. It dropped down to the uh, mid-20s now. It's sitting at 21.15 right now. Um, we do still, and we'll talk about this later, we still do have a uh, buy on the SVXY to short the VIX sitting somewhere in the 28-ish range to catch a peak. So if the VIX does make a spike like it has a tendency to do uh, we want to catch that spike and short it back down because as you can see every time it spikes it's gonna uh, retrace back down so we'll see if that happens um, so now we'll go ahead and look at the futures now I'm in the markets tab of the browser version of Weeble and as always, you can get two or more free stocks with Weeble via our affiliate link below. And let's take a look at how the markets ended up on Friday and what we can discern in terms of the trends going into next week. One of the things I wanted to point out, a nice, another nice feature in the Markets tab in Weeble is the calendar feature where we can select the calendar. We can select the earnings tab and the next earnings season starts on October 4th. So we can scroll down and we can see who's going to be uh, announcing earnings on the 4th, 5th, etc. this week and possibly uh, who we want to watch uh, for their earnings report and the reaction to those earnings reports, which we'll talk about uh, in a few minutes is how, how me, we may want to play uh, earnings reports can also see from the after hours on Friday who the top gainers were, if there's any trends, we see some pharma, 
biotechs, etc. Top gainers on on Friday. Who are the top losers after hours on Friday? Again, a, a kind of a mixture. Um, another one of the nice features is we can see the best performing indices from Friday. Again, a lot of reopening stocks and. Uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about is with the Moderna pill news, uh, we had a euphoric rally in reopening stocks. So you can see airlines, hotels, etc. Anything related to reopening had a euphoric uh, pop on Friday. And um, we'll, we'll talk more uh, as we move forward as to how in my opinion, this current euphoric rally is probably a little bit premature and uh, possibly overdone and how we may be able to take advantage of that uh, in the future. Another nice feature in the markets tab in Webull is this most popular ETF. So we saw most popular indus industries reopening plays. We can also see most popular ETFs. And we can get a feel for, okay, where's the money flowing in in these ETFs? And we can see if we look at the indices, um, it'll give us a feel for our people betting up or down. And we see UDAO, U Russell, uh, U Pro, QQQ, TQQQ, QLD. Those are all betting that the market indices are going up. So the sentiment here that we could discern from this uh, markets tab for the ETFs uh, on the markets is that people are betting that the uh, indices are going up. So that helps us know what the sentiment is uh, in, in that um, trend. The other thing is if we look at the uh, indice, uh, the industries, uh, we can get kind of a feel for, okay, it's industrials, healthcare, financials, etc. Uh, the other thing on the market tab, uh, if we look at the VIX, we can see people are betting short on the VIX. So they're betting long on the other indices, short on the VIX. So I, I found that uh, helpful from this uh, most popular ETFs in the market tab. So I hope that helps uh, give us an idea of what the sentiment is in the market going forward in the next week. Okay, now let's make our updates to our watch list for October 4th through October 8th. Firstly, I want to congratulate everybody in our Beach Bum Trading community who followed us into the cold, the KOLD, the short on uh, nat gas trade on the 28th um, at 4 a.m. And uh, you'll see we closed that uh, for a nice profit on the 30th and let, I wanted to look at that trade in more detail as that's a real good uh, example of you know why why we get up at 4 a.m. Um, and wh where those opportunities are and I'll, I'll put a link to our you know where's it's 4 a.m. where's do you know where your stocks are uh, in the description box below Again, we highly recommend uh, Webull as a trading account because you can start trading at 4 a.m. And you, we recommend you have some money in a Webull account to be able to take advantage of this trade. So here's cold during the past week. And again, I wanted to point this example out as, okay, here's here's why I get up at 4 a.m. To, to check for this. As we can see on the 28th, there was a, a gap down right at the open at 4 a.m. in cold. So we jumped on that gap down, went long. We didn't catch the very bottom, but that's uh, that's how swing trading works. You don't expect to catch the very bottom or the very top, but you can still make a lot of money. So we rode this guy up until the 28th. And then at 4 a.m. again, we see this gap down right at 4 a.m. on the 30th. And so we could also see in the futures and in investing.com real time that I showed earlier, we, we could see, okay, uh, that gas was, was retracing. It was going back down. So we closed that trade at that point and uh, made a nice, nice profit from here to here. 
and then we can see okay now nat gas is is kind of trending it trended down on um thursday or the cold trend nat gas trended up cold trended down then nat gas uh, surprisingly went down on friday but we're going to be watching this one very closely to, uh, for this opportunity again to present itself because, again, as we talked about earlier, we expect uh, people are saying that gas is going to go to 6 or 7, which would push coal down. Right now we've got a price target at this previous low. Again, if net gas goes 6 to 7, it'll drive coal even lower. Um, and expect you know we expect a great scalping opportunity again in cold um, and again i'm i'm going to be up at 4 a.m looking for these gap downs to jump on and gap ups to uh, take profits a lot of these etfs they do that right at 4 a.m you'll get a gap up or gap down and that's where the opportunity uh, presents itself so if we go through our other watch list items that we've had over the past week or so, uh, APT, we're going to see it broke down below support. We're going to take APT off the watch list for now. Uh, the next support level for APT is somewhere around 612. So it, it's, it's broken down through support. And right now, uh, we're going to take that one off. Again, you can see how easy it is to maintain a watch list. Uh, in Weeble and we've got another video on how to uh, create and maintain watch lists in Weebles. Um, but I, I put this here because we just produced a due diligence video on Bud and I will put this uh, a link to this video in the description box below so you can see our analysis and our uh, decision on the fact that we're not going to add bud to the watch list right now this was a great example of why you want to do updated due diligence on a stock even when you've owned in the past uh, are familiar with we've we've owned bud in the past made money on bud in the past but we wanted to take a new look because it looked like it was coming down to a support level we said hey is, is bud a good buy here and you'll see in our due diligence uh, video that we just produced that we decided no, Bud's not a good buy right now. Um, and you can listen to that video for uh, the detailed reasons. But we're not going to put Bud on our watch list for now for those reasons. Uh, charge point, again, broke down below support. Um, there was a large insider sell on October 1st, and for those reasons, we're going to take charge point off the watch list as well for the time being. DPW, if you've been keeping up with the comments on last week's watch list, you'll see we went long DPW at about 226 on the 28th so we are now long dpw we've got price targets uh around 296 so quite quite a ways up uh, if we back out we can see you know it has a longer term trend up so again we are long dpw i'm going to take it off this watch list because uh, we already own it um, again, DPW is electric vehicles, battery chargers, kind of infrastructure play, etc. So if you're not currently in DPW and it gives you another dip buy opportunity, uh, you might want to take advantage of that. We're going to leave DRIP on the watch list as we have discussed. Um, we are waiting for a peak in oil. We will probably lower this uh, price target line, you know, down down to where the latest support level is. Um, we're waiting for the top in oil, at which time we will short it. That might be $77 oil, might be 80 might and people are saying as high as 100 We're going to leave FCAP on there for now. Um, it's a low flow. It's very choppy. Um, we may reconsider just just because of its choppiness, but for now we'll leave. This is a bank, 
and we'll leave it on there for a price target of 40 uh, see if it kind of stabilizes um, Fang D is the short on the fangs. It's kind of up right now, but if we do get a, a brief retracement in the fangs further, we might uh, take a shot at Fang D. Uh, it's short on the fangs. Cold, we talked about. Sox is the short on the semiconductor industry. You can see it's already run up. Uh, we kind of, we weren't able to take advantage of that run up at this time. Maybe you did. That would be great. But for now, we're going to take socks off because it's already made its run. We'll wait for it to come back down before we want to watch it again. TMB and TTT, again, they've already run up. It didn't retrace, didn't come back down. We thought we might get a shot at it if it came back down. But uh, since they didn't, we're going to take TMB and TTT off to watch list for now. Um, you'll also see in the comments uh, from the past week that we went long to REITs so that are monthly div nice monthly dividend paying REITs on both the 29th. We went long on LTC, which is a seniors housing and healthcare property REIT, pays a seven plus percent dividend. Uh, it just recently paid uh, out on 921, so uh, we would expect the next dividend around 1021. We also went long O, which is Realty Income Corporation. We've owned them off and on and made money on them off and on for quite some time. Uh, it has a little bit lower dividend. It's about 4.3%, 4.28%. Uh, again, it pays monthly. It just went X dividend on uh, September 30th. And so when it goes X dividend, all these dividend paying stocks, when they go X dividend, they tend to gap down a little bit. And that tends to be a good opportunity to buy at a support level when it gaps down to a support. You buy it, then you have to hold it for a month. But uh, this is what they call a dividend aristocrat stock. And it... Uh, tends to increase its dividend just a little bit each each uh, month or quarter um, and it pays out nicely and it happens to have some um, uh, upward uh, potential so you can get additional yield if it goes 65 to 70 or so uh, and then you can cash it out wait for it to come back down and, and buy back in um, we're going to leave we'll leave UVXY <coughs> And as we've already mentioned, we've got a position to buy SVXY uh, to short the VIX if it spikes. If it comes back down to 16-ish, uh, we'll, we'll buy UVXY and ride it back up or wait for it to spike again. And we'll be scalping uh, the VIX. VOO is a long-term investment on the S&P 500. And if it happens to dip around 390, uh, we're going to put a chunk of cash just to sit in our long-term investment account and ride the uh, upward channel in the S&P as Jim Cramer, etc. Uh, recommend, you know, put 10K in a um, low-cost uh, index fund on the S&P 500. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one. Boozy, we're going to take off the watch list again. It broke down below its support. And this, you can see it broke down through this 1075 support. Uh, it's trending down. We're going to take Boozy off the watch list for right now. So again, I know we've got a short watch list right now for this, uh, this coming week. But we will be analyzing things on a daily basis again. And please watch the comments. We'll put updates to the watch list in the comments to this video. Or if we buy or sell things. And uh, so we'll put that in the comments and, and update our watch list on a daily basis accordingly. Please feel free to also share in the comments uh, your, your buys and sells. Um, you know, or other things that you're you're on watch. Put those in the comments so that uh, all your fellow beach bump traders can benefit. Um, also, please post in the comments any other tickers, uh, stock symbols that you would like us to do a deeper dive uh, on the due diligence and 
and we'll see if we can produce some further due diligence videos on those symbols that you're interested in. Also, I wanted to mention we have a Twitter account. It's Beach Bum Trading. We had to cut the U out because it was already taken. Uh, but we try to also post, uh, quote, real-time alerts of our buys and also news on our current positions. We have an automated system that aggregates news on all of our current positions, and I review that news and post things of interest in our Twitter account. So if you're interested in some of these stocks, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Beach Bum Trading, and uh, you'll get that information as well. Uh, I also wanted to point out, you know, we don't always post sells because everyone's uh, objective situation, risk tolerance is different, you know. And so uh, you may want to take profit, you know, a 10% profit or 20% profit, or uh, you're not comfortable with uh, letting it ride further because of the risk. So. Uh, we'll we'll post the buys. Sometimes we'll let you know that we're out of a position, uh, but everybody's um, trading style is different, and uh, we want to respect that. Uh, we're not financial advisors. We're not telling you to buy or sell anything or when to buy or sell. We're just trying to help you learn so that you can determine your style of trading and make the most profit from uh, your style of trading. So we hope this all helped. Uh, now we'll talk about some strategies while we uh, wait for the market to bottom and turn up. Uh, how can we continue to make money? So since we talked at the beginning of this game plan that uh, we may have to wait several weeks into October for the markets to really bottom, stabilize, and, and turn back up, um, let's talk about some strategies about how we can make money while we wait for the market to bottom and turn back up. Again, we expect October to be a good month, but it may take till the end of October uh, for it to turn positive. So what do we do in the meantime? Well, one of the things we talked about is that we have a earnings reports and earnings season is again starting this week on October 4th. And one of the things we've made some of our uh, best trades is on irrational reactions to earnings reports. So if you hear on CNBC or see in the news that somebody reports earnings and the market reacts irrationally, it drops on positive earnings or the earnings weren't really that bad and the reaction was overly negative and it's uh, dropped below or hit a support level and it's something you wanted to buy, uh, that's a great opportunity. Again, we've we've uh, taken advantage of those in things like IBM, Bud, Cody, GE, etc. over over the years. So, listen for irrational reactions to earnings reports and see if you can take advantage of that. Uh, dividend paying ETFs and stocks, uh, particularly monthly uh, paying. Um, ETFs. You know, we like in our long GLDI and SVL, SLVO, which are the Credit Suisse uh, ETNs that pay monthly on gold and silver. Um, and we just let them sit there and pay out monthly. And when gold and silver rally, you know, we cash those out. Also, monthly paying REITs. Uh, as we just mentioned, we went along both O and LTC. O is a general REIT, LTC is senior housing, uh, nursing facilities, we, we like the healthcare based REITs, um, they pay monthly, uh, better than inflation, again these are also good for increasing inflation because their dividend rate is over 2%. So again we, we like the healthcare sector REITs, uh, not real positive, not bullish on the mortgage backed REITs at this time because in my humble opinion I think the mortgage backed the housing sector REITs have probably topped out already. Uh, as we've talked about uh, several times you know we're, we're continuously scalping the VIX. When the VIX drops down to 16 or below we're looking too long using UVXY uh, and then short it when it spikes uh, above 20 somewhere 20, 24, 28 etc. 
Also, you know, every week we look at the commodities, we look at the futures and look for opportunities. Is somebody overextended, an opportunity to short? Is somebody bottoming, opportunity to long? That's why we look at those futures, is for these, uh, uh, you know, outsized opportunities to scalp. So, you know, right now we're looking at scalping oil, using, uh, particularly shorting at this point, using drip, but if you... Uh, if it were to drop precipitously, we'd go long using USOI, which is, again, a monthly paying um, Credit Suisse uh, fund, or we can just long it using Gush, which is the inverse drip. Same way we've talked about scalping nat gas. Uh, right now we're looking to short nat gas using cold, but if nat gas drops precipitously, we can go long nat gas using boil. And, you know, we've talked about and, and we'll pr 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 provide additional ETFs to long and short the commodities. We have our list here for the indices, the commodities, etc. So again, you can scalp the, any of the indices. Um, you know, you, you want to look for a decent move for, for a decent profit on, on the scalp uh, to justify the risk. But if you want to lo long any of the indices, so you got UPRO, TQQQ, UDAO, URTY for the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, and Russell, respectively. And the inverse of those to short is SPXU, SQQQ, SDAO, and SRTY to short them. So again, there are plenty of opportunities, even while we're just waiting. If the market's chopping around, we're waiting for it to bottom and turn up. There are plenty of opportunities to make money in the markets, whether the market's going up, the market's going down, the market's chopping sideways. Uh, every day there's an opportunity to make money, and we hope that you see that. We hope that we're helping you see that and helping you take advantage of that. So thank you again for watching this video to the end. I know there's a lot of material. It's kind of long, but I hope you find it valuable. Please let us know in the comments below. Uh, please smash the like button if you're not already subscribed. We hope you'll choose to subscribe and share this video with uh, your other fellow traders. Uh, click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And we wish you the best of luck and have a great trading week. We hope that you like our weekly game plan for the trading week for this week. Thank you for watching the video to the end. If you found this helpful, we hope that you will choose to subscribe to our Beach Plum Trading YouTube channel. And please click the bell icon below to automatically be notified whenever we publish a new video. Please also share this with your fellow traders and friends via the share button included below. And let us know if you found our weekly game plans helpful in the comments uh, included below. And uh, let us know how we can improve. What would you like to see more, less of, etc. Thank you again for watching. Uh, good luck and have a great trading week. Bye.